management and innovation, people think about, uh, I, I used to study in the United States, actually in Silicon Valley, and pe people think that, that innovation is happening somewhere in a garage where two boys are coming together and they, they do uh, companies like Google and Facebook and things like that, which, which is absolutely correct, so it's correct. But this is probably 1% or less than 1% of innovation. And uh, the rest happens every single day uh, in every single product category uh, across the board. And, and I have to tell you that when, when you do an analysis of, for example, technology and technology innovation, you would find that uh, 75, 80% of the value is derived in very traditional industries. And I, I was so happy to see that you have partners with companies like uh, Devin, and I, I also saw that some rep representatives are going to be here from the insurance industry, uh, as well as other industries, because basically this is the whole point. This, this has to be a multidisciplinary, um, um, and, and my advice to you as students and professors, that, that the broader look you take, the better it is going to be. Uh, because uh, what, what our role as a technology company is, is to actually um, give you a highlight what technology in general technology in general is, is able to do for your business. And uh, I'm looking uh, for probably the next speaker is going to be, I don't know, maybe Thomas uh, uh, from Devin, and, and I'm sure he's going to talk about the fact that, you know, what additional services can you add on top of water? What, uh, what uh, customer relationships you can build with the help of technology? And, and maybe the very core of the company that he represents and I don't want to steal his show, by the way, I don't know him, but, but I can imagine that, uh, that uh, the very core of, of, uh, of his company that he represents is water, which, by the way, I even drink in Budapest, uh, and that's absolutely true because I have a friend who brings it from Bulgaria. But, uh, but, uh, but, but actually, what else? What else uh, uh, how do you improve your, your, your business essentials and what innovation you can attach to it? And, and this is why I would like you to forget for a moment about the garage firms that, because some of them have become very, very successful but think about the innovation as, as a broad concept and think about technology as a, of, of how uh, it can help you to build, uh, to build your, uh, uh, your, your business. And, um, and, uh, and the combination of the two, and this is where your role as, uh, as the institute, as well as the, as the whole university, WUZF, comes together, is that, that, uh, that I think probably business science is the only one uh, that I can think of which is so multidisciplinary because it has social elements, it has technological elements, it also has some economic and, and natural science, uh, you know, mathematical basis. Uh, and uh, and you need to you need to understand the concept of this and how can it actually help your own uh, your own career. So that's that's the idea that I have in my mind. And and that just one one last thought that I want to share with you is that I actually very often have this dialogue with um, with uh, senior decision makers. And, and probably a few months ago, I actually had this dialogue in, in person with uh, President Levnaliev. And, uh, and, and, and I, was, I was trying to tell him, but you know, he immediately gets it, right? Is that, that if, if you need to, to, to build the competitiveness of the country, like Bulgaria, um, we believe that there is a direct link between technology absorption in education, in uh, private companies, in the government sector, uh, and, and competitiveness. And, and if, you, if you actually, I really encourage you, um, uh, and maybe that could be a good cause for me as a as a as, as, a, as a doctor of, of the university to, to actually give you some insight into this because if you look at the World Economic Forum research then you will find that Bulgaria ranks around 60 70 in terms of competitiveness as well as the so-called technology absorption index which we call the network readiness index and uh, and you will see that the people like you young energetic educated they are very, very good in terms of absorbing technology. Probably all of you are Facebook users. You have smartphones. Uh, you are your daily user of, uh, of Internet and services of the Internet, for example, in banking, etc., etc. But the problem is, uh, and, and actually in all these rankings, Bulgaria is relatively doing well in the world. To sometimes number 30, number 40, number 25, which is not bad for a small country in a big world. 
but where, where the country does relatively poorly is, is exactly the, what I call the innovation capacity and, uh, and the, the absorption of technology to create new services and products, uh, um, uh, both uh, at the, the private company level, so private level, as well as the government level. Um, and, and sometimes I can tell you the country ranks above 100, which means that there are 100 countries in the world out of the whatever roughly 144 measured that are doing better, which means that there are many African countries doing better than Bulgaria, right? And, uh, and I don't think this is, um, this is where the country should be. And what I'm trying to explain to, to, to people like you, because you have a big role as a, as, a, as a leading educational organization in the country to preach this, and also to politicians and business, is that if you address some of those factors, it will have a direct impact on the competitiveness of the economy, therefore the living standard of the people. Uh, and maybe let me just stop here uh, and give the word to the, to the rest of the speakers, and of course I'm happy to answer some questions.